Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG English. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haoen. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们西平方的节目 NG English。我是 Angela。We have a great show for you today with our good friend Manu, who's known around the Taiwanese community as Chang Dengwei. 是的，今天我们很幸运的邀请到了 Manu Sik 美音艺术公关公司的创办人兼音乐天才 Manu 陈登伟来到 a n g e 英文，跟大家分享他对音乐的热爱，以及一路走来学外语的经验分享。But before we get to the interview with Manu and I, Angela is going to help us break down some of the cultural differences Manu spoke about, particularly about a fun little story where he confused museum with Muslim. And Angela is going to help us break down some of the different religions in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it away, Angela. Here on NG English. 好的，没问题 ，John。谢谢你的介绍。那没有错，今天在 NG 英文的部分呢，我们要来接受一点文化洗礼，认识认识世界五大宗教的英文名称。大家赶快把你的 NG cheat sheet， 这个 NG 英文专属的笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。在待会的访谈中呢 ，Manu 会提到说啊，他曾经有一次在一场正式的演讲报告中，不小心把 museum 博物馆讲成 Muslim， 让现场气氛尴尬的不得了。所以今天我们决定要来跟各位介绍介绍全球五个主要宗教的英文名称，希望大家牢记在心里。以后不管是要跟朋友聊博物馆，还是聊宗教文化历史，都可以自在有自信的侃侃而谈哦。首先，刚才提到的这个 Muslim 就是一般常听到的穆斯林，或是回教徒、伊斯兰教徒，信奉伊斯兰教的人。好，不过伊斯兰教呢，它又是另外一个字哦，跟我们中文发音很像，叫做 Islam。Islam。第二个，我们认识一个跟在地文化历史比较有关系的佛教 Buddhism。Buddhism。那佛教徒我们称为 Buddhist。Buddhist. 接着，我们把地图位置转移到印度。他们信奉的印度教英文是 Hinduism. Hinduism. 那信奉印度教的人，我们可以说 Hindu. Hindu. 再来，基督教大家都知道怎么说吗？它虽然大致上有分成三大派别，但是为了不让大家搞混，今天我们就先学它的主要名称就好。基督教英文是。Christianity, Christianity. 好，那基督徒呢，则是 Christian, Christian. 还有一个也是起源于中东地区的犹太教 Judaism, Judaism. 那信奉犹太教的人，我们称为 Jew, Jew. 哇，讲了这么多，大家都有记得吗？我们稍微复习一下好了。跟我们台湾文化历史背景比较有关系的佛教是 Buddhism。Buddhism。那佛教徒大家记得怎么说吗？没错，叫做 Buddhist。Buddhist。那伊斯兰教虽然是 Islam， 但是伊斯兰教徒或是回教徒、穆斯林，我们叫做 Muslim。Muslim。再来，印度教是 Hinduism。Hinduism， 而信奉印度教的人是记得吗？是怎么讲呢？没错，叫做 Hindu。Hindu。最后两个，基督教和犹太教，大家有印象吗？基督教是 Christianity。Christianity。那基督徒呢，则是 Christian。Christian。那犹太教是是什么嘞？答对了 ，Judaism，Judaism Judaism。那信奉犹太教的人，我们称为 Jew，Jew Jew。好啦，希望刚才讲到这些对你的英文学习之路有所帮助。如果有漏掉没有听到，或是写下来的，也不用担心，可以上我们的 YouTube 频道，随时你要听几次就给他听几次。那如果大家都已经准备好了的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容。听听 Manu 他的分享吧。All right, all right, all right. As always, thank you, Miss Angela Ma, for that wonderful NG Ingwen breakdown. My guest today on the show is a Taiwanese musician. He is a pianist, previous orchestra manager for Phantom of the Opera, event organizer and planner, lover of traveling the world, 
culture and style, and so much more. So everyone, please welcome my good friend Manu. Hello, everyone. I'm Manu. I'm glad to come here. Yeah, man. We high five on the show. Welcome to NG Ingwen. So, my man, you are a busy, busy man who does many things, but you've been focusing a lot lately on event production and building events around the music and entertainment scene. So, can you share a little bit about that? 访谈开始呢，马努会跟大家聊到说啊，最近几年呢，常常都在办这个 PR events， 办这个公关活动。好，但是呢，今年因为这个肺炎疫情的关系，那为了大家的健康着想，他们打算把这些活动呢改成线上进行，希望透过网络，透过这样子的方式，让大家一样可以尽情的线上 party， 彼此互通有无，欣赏音乐表演。赶快来听听他的分享吧。Yes, of course. For the past few years, we was focused on like the PR event, and this year, 2020, that we have,、um, unfortunately, we have the virus. So we're trying to change our induction. We're trying to put all the event online, and still trying to make the event make people happy, make fun online, and share with the world. Beautiful, yeah. So, like you said, you know, having the COVID virus right now is changing a lot of things. But you are staying very creative with your approach to how to fix that. So, what are some things that you have found that are really kind of interesting or new or unique about creating a concert online? 接下来 ，Manu 会分享到说，刚才前面讲的这个把公关活动转移到线上进行，不是只是像一般你可能在 YouTube、在脸书上面看看影片而已哦。像有些国家啊，如果是要办演奏会、音乐会的话，他们还真的会把表演者的背景营造出那种 concert hall 那个演艺厅的感觉。那表演者呢，一般会放一个小屏幕在椅子上，把镜头对着自己。那每个线上参与、线上在看表演的人，也把镜头对着自己。让表演者可以在表演的时候看到每个来宾的脸，就会很像真的是在这个表演现场。只是所谓的现场，其实是在线上。那如果听众朋友觉得这听起来好像有点难以理解的话，可以把它想成是现在很多网红都有在做的这个直播。好，只是如果你有在看直播的话，那你也要把镜头打开露脸这样子，就是你可以看得到开直播的人的脸，那开直播的人也可以看到你的脸这样。好，那只是妈女说，现在他们还没有办法真的去执行这样子的活动，因为四 G 网络速度不够快。等到五 G 出来之后呢，这个 Virtual World Entertainment 这个虚拟娱乐节目就可以成真了。Yeah, we're actually holding a project that we are trying to do. It's what we when we're talking about concerts online, it's not just like sharing on the YouTube or like Facebook, then put your you put your video on or put your live on. It's like more like it's um it's selling tickets. So as we know, like in some countries, that's we they they start to build a concert hall, like special concert hall. For example, it's like they put a screen, mini screen, in the chair, and but the screen is not faced to you, it's not faced to audience, it's faced to the performer. Why? Because we want to really make like the real concert. So as you are when you're young, when you're in the home. And that you can still feel like you are in the concert hall, and the singer can also feel you. That's so cool. So actually, what you're saying right there is the performer can look out on the crowd and see all the virtual faces of people that are actually attending that show. Is that right? Yes, exactly. But this idea is actually not new. But because with the not technology right now, we can't do it. 4G is too slow, so that's why everybody's waiting for 5G. When 5G is coming, that everything can be true. Yeah, man, the power of technology, and so I am really looking forward to that 5G then, because that sounds like that will create a whole new kind of virtual world of entertainment. Thinking a little bit about your own entertainment career, you are a musician and a beautiful pianist, but you are also the orchestra manager of Phantom of the Opera. Is that correct? 前面我们谈到了妈女他们团队对于未来线上公关活动的计划真的是很酷哦，但其实呢还有更酷的哦。妈女她除了办这些音乐会活动以外，本身呢也是一位音乐人，很会弹钢琴哦，而且甚至在二零一四年的时候啊，担任当时在世界巡回表演的百老汇知名音乐剧《Phantom of the Opera》歌剧魅影管弦乐团的总监呢。他说，乐团到各个国家演出的时候啊，都会结合当地元素、当地文化，邀请在地音乐人跟歌剧魅影乐团的固定班底一起演奏。那他的工作呢，就是要去负责筛选、去试镜，找出适合的人选来加入表演。
我们赶快来听这段分享吧。Yes, I was um, it was 2014. I was with the World Tour Group Phantom of Opera. I was the orchestra manager. So my job is basically when it comes to the country that I audition the musicians. Try to make the combination of、um, the foreign foreign performers with the local performer. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you're every country you go to, you're allowing these local artists to join in this international program and and create this beautiful mix of cultures and music. I love that. So when actually did your journey as a musician begin? 哇，听完了马女前面精彩的工作经验之后，现在我们要来问问她，音乐之路是什么时候展开的呢？ When did his journey as a musician begin? He says, "Actually, when he was five years old, his parents sent him to the Li Music School to study music." But when he was a small boy, he wanted to play with other children. He just wanted to play and wanted to play with other children. So he stopped playing music for a few months. Until he realized that he actually wanted to play with other children. He really wanted to play with other children. So he stopped playing music for a few months. Until he realized that he actually wanted to play with other children. He really wanted to play with other children. 后来，两千零一年的时候，还赢得了钢琴比赛的冠军，是当年的 champion。他说，当时大概现场有五十人参赛吧。得知自己是冠军的时候，真的是又惊又喜，开心的不得了。赶快来一起分享他的喜悦吧。Well, when I was five, my parents put me in the private music school, and as every kid, like like every kid, I I just want to go out and play the football or something. I didn't want to stay in the piano room and practice piano, so I actually stop. For about like few months, but actually I found it that after I I feel like I miss it, and then I come back to practice, and I feel like oh life is different because that's something I really loved, and then I still focus on. And I was the champion of 2001 in Taiwan of the piano, that which means I was in the in the musical hall and with all the other pianists. I think we were like 50 person, and there was like five judges. And I still remember the song I play was Rahmaninov, and I was really surprised that finally I win the prize, and I was so happy. That is so interesting. So, did you feel very nervous when you're trying to perform this song in front of maybe audience and judges, or did you feel that that was your your calling and you were like super confident? 上段内容我们聊到 Manu 他在两千零年的时候赢得了钢琴比赛冠军。那现在好奇宝宝 John 又要继续问了。那时候 Manu 他比赛会紧张吗？还是很有自信，觉得说，哎，弹钢琴是他的 calling， 是他的这个使命呢？哎呦，上台比赛怎么会有不紧张的嘛？对不对？不过 Manu 说啊，他一开始确实是紧张到不行哦，脑中一片空白。但是上台一鞠躬之后，一切就变得不一样了，眼里只剩下他和钢琴还有音乐，一心只想着要好好演奏。开始把评审观众都抛诸脑外，进入一种全神贯注、忘我的境界。那这样子的境界呢，也就是等一下大家听到 John 说的 flow state， flow state。赶快来听听吧。Well, actually, for me, I'm I'm sort of person like before to get on the stage, I'm super nervous. I want to see all the people, and I'm I'm just afraid, and my 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 brain is just like I I can only see the white color in my brain. But when I get on the stage, I did a bow. And then I was in front of the piano, and everything is different. It was just me and the piano and the music, and I focus on and I share my music with the audience. I love that. That sounds like something we might say in English as like the flow state. You entered that flow state, and nothing else mattered. Just you sharing your love of music. So very, very beautiful. So thinking a little bit further, as in maybe 2021 and beyond. Do you want to focus more on performing as an individual artist, or do you want to continue to build concerts for other artists? 接下来我们要来问问 Manu， 对于未来他有没有什么新计划呢？想要继续个人演奏，还是打算帮别人办更多音乐会、演奏会嘞？他说，其实自己还是会弹钢琴，还是会表演，只是啊，他的 focus， 他的焦点比较会放在当 producer， 当制作人这一方面。为什么呢？因为 Manu 认为啊，如果只是他个人演奏的话，能够分享的很有限，非常的 limited。但是呢，作为一名制作人，他可以邀请不同的音乐人，可以办各种不同的演奏。所以未来几年，他希望可以朝这一部分发展，让台湾人认识更多音乐世界的美好。
Well, since like few years, like since two thousand fourteen, that I still play on the stage. But right now, I'm more focused on like、uh, as a producer. I want to make more shows. So as a performer, I'm just a pianist. So what I can share is limited. But as a producer, I can make more shows. So my goal for The next few years will be bring more interesting artists or like great artists and try to make the show and try to bring a better world to Taiwan. I love that. Well, I think you are on a wonderful journey and a wonderful road for that because I know your love of music runs very, very deep. And speaking of your love for music. Your love of languages, and you know, here on NG Ingwen, that is kind of the heart of our show. But your language abilities in English, French, Chinese, maybe Taiwanese, have really opened up all of these new doors for you too. So, when did your language journey begin? In this interview, we will talk about Manu's language ability. Listeners, do you know? He not only can speak Chinese and English, he can also speak fluent Chinese. 天哪，又会弹钢琴，又会双外语，真是太厉害，太让人羡慕了。不过是说他这个学外语这条路啊，是从什么时候开始的、啊？马努说，这其实跟弹钢琴一样，从小爸妈呢就让他开始学英文。那自己其实也是蛮有兴趣，很喜欢讲，很喜欢讲英文，觉得每次开口说英文的时候，好像瞬间变成另外一个人一样。后来十六七岁的时候啊，开始想要更认识这个世界。那刚好那时候又有一个去法国当交换学生的机会，所以他也就搬到当地，展开他另一段人生故事。而这个呢，也就是他学法文的开始。When I was a kid, I'm just like other people. I don't, I didn't just learn piano. My parents also put me in the private school for learning English. So, well, I started to learn English, and I always love this language. I feel like it's When when I speak English, I'm a different person. I feel wonderful. But when I was sixteen, seventeen, I feel like I want to learn more. I want to discuss more about this world. And there was an opportunity as a exchange student to go to France. So that's why I went to France then to have another journey. Beautiful. I love how you just said you're you were another person when you were speaking English. You you must have such a beautifully creative mind because I really feel like you you are enjoying everything you do so much. So that that really just sounded so lovely when you said that. But like you said, you went to France to further learn another language. So how did that journey go? I mean, I know French people love the French language so much and are so passionate about it. So did you feel? Excited or nervous about learning French? 前面讲到 Manu 曾经搬到法国去当交换学生，学了法文。但其实他说一开始只是想要认识他们的文化，压根没有想过要学法文。想说会英文就没问题了吧？国际语言内。但殊不知法国人最爱国，最爱讲法文了。在那边讲英文根本就没有人会理你，所以 Manu 也不得不开始学法文。那他的宿舍又刚好是 international dormitory， 是国际学生宿舍，有来自各个不同国家的人可以用英文交流。那马努就请他们教他一些简单的法文句型，像有一次他就学会用法文问这个火车站在哪里，学会了之后呢，就到路上去问人，让自己真的去实际运用这个句子。他说，虽然他自己就明明知道火车站在哪里，但就是照问。而且因为这样子，让他还另外学到了左转、右转、过马路等相关的法文单字，甚至还交了不少新朋友。这样子的方式，我还真的是第一次听到，感觉真的蛮实用的哦。听众朋友们，改天不妨也试试这样的方法吧。Actually, I didn't plan to learn French. When I went there, I thought like I speak English is an international language. I don't need to actually learn French. I just want to know the culture. But actually, I was wrong. In France, basically, the people don't really speak English with you, so you actually need to learn French. But as I was a French student, I was in the business school, so I didn't have any French course. So what I did is, well, I was lucky. I was in the dormitory, an international dormitory. So I met lots of international students. Obviously, some Americans, some British. So I asked them, like, can you teach me some phrase? For example, like, where、uh, is train station? So I practice like where is train station like in French very correctly, and I just walk on、uh, I just walk on the streets and when I meet someone I just ask him like where is train station even I know where is train station because I took the train to, for coming in this city, and so that's how I learn like left right and cross the streets and I also make a lot of friends. That is so great. So essentially to sum up what you just said, you learned one phrase. 
you mastered it correctly in your head, and then you went out and you tried it. And I think that is a really systematic and beautiful way to begin learning a language. And because of that, you were getting a bunch of new input. So when people are talking to you, they're telling you, yeah, left, right, straight, oh, around the corner. And these are all new words in French that you're learning. So I think that is so beautiful. And that leads me to kind of a question I love to ask here on NG Ingwen, and that is about tips and advice. So can you kind of further explain any tips and advice for learning French, English, Chinese, or any language? 除了刚才上段 Manu 提到的到街上去问路、实际跟路人练习句型以外，等一下呢，他也会提到，其实他认为学语言不是就只是在学书上那些单字、片语、句型这样子而已，你也是在学他们的文化，所以不用害怕去开口练习说。如果哪天你刚有机会跟母语人士讲话的时候，就大胆的讲。彼此互相交流你们的文化，就算你单字念错文法不对，也不需要觉得怎么样啊。本来就不是我们的母语嘛，讲错是正常的。要实际去练习才是最重要的。就像前面他举的例子一样，他只是学会一句法文，就到路上去跟路人练习，结果还学到更多其他单字。而且因为不是从书上硬背，而是有那个情境在，有真的在运用，又帮他更加深了那些用法在脑海里的印象。I think for learning in for learning language, a new language is is not only about learning. It's not only about learning from the books. It's also the culture behind. And I, I think a lot of Taiwanese people are afraid to talk into the foreigner. But I don't think we need to be afraid. We just need to be. We just show ourselves. Even we make mistake, it's it's okay. Why not? Because I mean, I'm we're foreigners. So just have some courage and talk to them, and you will have different experience. And also, I just, for example, like my story from the train station. That's just one phrase I learn, but everything from that, I learn so many things. So just get started, and you will discover more. Yeah, I love that. So actually, what you're saying, I love so much. And it's basically, you don't have to learn the whole book. You don't have to learn all the courses and get that certification to go try. No, you learned one thing, and then you went out and applied it. And actually, you got so much back from it: new friends, new words, new phrases, and a lifetime of memories. So, well, well done, my friend. So that leads me to another question I love to ask here on NG Ingwen, and that is: Do you remember any time maybe you or a friend messed up some words in English, Chinese, or French for this case? Now, we are going to ask Manu. 在大家学语言的过程中，有没有闹过什么笑话，或是陷入尴尬的窘境呢？他说有一次在学校要做一场报告，是很大型、很正式，要穿西装上台，现场有五百人那一种。那当时呢，他的报告内容是要介绍台湾，有讲到一些我们的 museum 博物馆，但因为他没有把博物馆的这个 museum 发音发好，变成了 Muslim 穆斯林，让教室每个人都一头雾水。但后来幸好，因为他的报告有一些博物馆的照片，大家就有稍微理解他要讲的应该是 museum， 不是 Muslim。虽然当时现场真的是蛮尴尬的，但也是因为发生这件事情，让马努永远都会记得博物馆跟穆斯林英文要怎么念才正确。Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, this is um is is kind of in our schedule when you learn in English or your any other language. So there's so many. For example, like this one, I I went to like a bakery and I order. I I was asking for a French bread, but actually I end up with a croissant or something. But,、uh, but most memorable like things it was like、uh, I was doing the presentation in the school, and there was like 500 people and like 10. Professor in front of me, I was well dressed up and I was with my suit. I was so happy. And then I was talking about the the the,、um, the subject was pre present presentation of Taiwan, and I was trying to talk about like some museum in Taiwan, but I just say like Muslim or something, and people just don't understand. I was like,、um, is that Muslim in Taiwan? <laughs> like so, and because it doesn't it doesn't match to the photo, so but that is also a really good point because. After that, I will never make a mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that, and I love actually how you just sum that up. So, kind of recapping that, yeah, you you said an incorrect word and it didn't match the photos of your presentation, but you know what? Actually, you learned that mistake won't happen because you learned from that. So, you were such an intelligent guy, Manu. I'm very impressed because yeah, people might make that same mistake over and over again, but you were like, hey, I'm never gonna make that mistake again. So. Well, well done. 
And that leads me, unfortunately, to our last question here on NZ Ying Wen. And that is, if you could go back in time and talk to a younger Manu, would there be any advice you give yourself on language or life? 访谈最后呢，马努会跟大家分享到说，如果可以回到过去，给以前的自己一些建议的话，他会想要告诉自己，好好专心做喜欢做的事情，把精力花在音乐上 ，keep going， 不要放弃，坚持下去就对了。What I'm going to tell to the younger Manu, I will tell him like trying to what the world is fantastic, but trying to focus on what you really love. And I know in deep of my heart, I really love music. Um, I'm a pianist, but I want to be even better. So I would tell my young, tell young man, you like focus on the music and focus on what you love and just keep going. Yeah, I love that. And your your love of music shines through. I really can feel your passion sitting here talking with you. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show today. So can you share maybe some social media where people can find more about your life or your event company? Yes, we do have like a fan page on Facebook. It's、um, Manuzik. Sorry, it's in French, so I will I will spell it. It's M A N U S I Q U E, and you can also find this on our website. Beautiful. All right, Manu. Well, it's been a pleasure. I wish you nothing but success, and hopefully we can work together and bring some artists here into Taiwan and create some wonderful memories. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. All right, everyone. Peace. That is our NG Ingwen show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. Don't forget to connect with us on Instagram or Facebook. You can search NG Ingwen, or you can search NG English I C R T. And make sure to tune in each week, Wednesday morning from six thirty to seven, and Wednesday night from nine to nine thirty. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. 好，那我们今天新平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听，别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线 English 在底线 I C R T。那大家也要记得每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 I C R T 频道 F M 一百，准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎大家上网搜寻西平方的攻其不备课程，或者是呢到我们西平方的官网，多读读一些有关 NG 英文的专栏文章，看看在 NG 英文里面的专栏有没有哪些是大家可以吸收学起来的一些小 p e o p l e 哦。我们下次见了，拜拜。